Hi, Adam from Audio Imperia here, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I created this hybrid trailer track using our all-in-one orchestral library nucleus in conjunction with several of our other libraries, including the recently redesigned photosynthesis and clavier piano, and the fantastic artifact reanimate and solo, all of which are now contact player compatible. The MIDI for this trailer track is available for you to download, and you'll find a link for it in the description below. So be sure to check that out and have fun dissecting and reconstructing this piece however you like. Before we get into the walkthrough, let's have a listen to the full track. My aim with this piece was to create something that would take full advantage of the synths, sound effects and percussion found in artifact reanimate and photosynthesis, as well as utilise the organic sounds and instruments found in nucleus, solo and clavier. A hybrid trailer track made perfect sense, blending the heavy orchestral forces with aggressive synths, pounding drums and otherworldly sound design to create something short, exciting and impactful. I decided to create a short piece in two acts a brooding, menacing sound and intro that built an intensity before a brief drop and then a climactic back-end section that made full use of orchestral forces, trailer percussion and cinematic synths from the various libraries. Let's break this track down and look at how I used each library to put this piece together. We'll begin with Nucleus, which provides the core elements of this track that the other libraries are built around. The main melodic element is a simple motif being played on the fantastic sounding French horns, trombones and trumpets. As the piece increases in intensity throughout the climax, the motif is introduced a fifth higher and altered slightly, and more notes are introduced to increase harmonic tension and flesh out the arrangement, driving us to the conclusion of the track. The low brass is serving a simple but important function here, and just providing root notes for the motif to play off against. Just as a side note, I love the expressive quality of the legatos in Nucleus. You can particularly hear these in the transition between the two notes on the trumpet. These simple techniques bring a layer of realism to the arrangement, which can add so much life to your music, especially if you're writing for genres like trailer music, which can become overly synthetic without the occasional human touch. The final thing I want to mention about the brass. To add even more intensity, I'm using a simple pitch shifter on the trombones to slide between the notes in our motif. Pitch bends are a common technique in trailer music. Used sparingly, they can sound more intense and exciting than a simple transition between notes. And this technique is a simple but highly effective one in this genre of music. The short strings are providing the motor for this piece of music. Intensity is a core feature of this genre and this repeating string ostinato is providing both rhythmic movement and tension in the climax. I'm also using the lower strings to sketch out the root notes for our ostinato to play against. 
I'm using just the basic string ensemble patch found in Nucleus to create these short strings. There's no need to split these eight into separate instruments and introduce unnecessary tracks. This ensemble patch sounds great and works perfectly in this genre of music. I also want to draw your attention to the envelope shaper here, one of the many great features inside Audio Imperia's Pyramid Engine. I'm using this to shorten the string spiccato slightly, helping to give them even more attack and bite and cut through our arrangement. We're going to cover photosynthesis in more detail later on in this video, but I just want to draw your attention to one sound from photosynthesis at this point. It's called Trash Stab, and I've modified it quite a bit, playing with the ADSR controls and adding some distortion, lo-fi and screamer effects to it, as well as filtering out a lot of the low and mid frequencies to create this cutting, synth string-like sound. This is blending with the organic string sounds of Nucleus and adding a lot of bite and attack to the overall string sound. Layering organic orchestral instruments with synth equivalents is common in trailer music and the combination of synth and organic will often cut through the mix better and is in keeping with our hybrid approach. I also have a long strings patch. Again, this is just the ensemble patch. No need to complicate things. These are playing aggressive tremolos at the start of each bar. That's helping the first beat of each bar really slam home and also providing some high frequency content to flesh out the arrangement and make everything sound huge. Let's move on to the gorgeous sounding choir, again from Nucleus. I'm using the staccatissimo phrases through this piece. The choir is just repeating the same short, sharp pattern throughout, but it adds a relentless intensity as the piece builds and builds. The juxtaposition of the repeating choir, string ostinato and brass motif against the changing root notes is what drives the intensity of the music and, again, that's a very common technique in trailer music, which is often simple in arrangement and concept, but composed of carefully layered elements that combine to create a huge, energetic wall of sound. Finally, I'm using the atonal percussion and drum kit from Nucleus. At the beginning of the piece, we have a simple rhythmic motif on the hi-hats, which is helping the strings and providing some movement in the intro section of our piece. As we move into the climax of our piece, we have the rhythm being provided by the wonderful sounding drum kit, which is playing this slightly syncopated rhythm throughout. This is being supported by the snares and piatti from the atonal orchestral percussion. These instruments provide accents in the percussion and also add some high frequency content to the arrangement. That takes us through all the instruments we've used from Nucleus. As you can see, the orchestra is still at the heart of the arrangement and we've built the hybrid elements around an orchestral core. I've used a couple of string instruments from our expressive solo library to help pad out the arrangement. Now, solo really is a wonderful sounding library packed full of beautifully played solo instruments, and my use of this library in this piece doesn't even scratch the surface of what it's capable of. I highly recommend you check out our solo walkthrough or some of the content on our social channels if you want a glimpse of what this library is capable of. Nevertheless, let's look at how I've worked with solo in this piece. I've used the solo cello and violin, and I'm primarily using them to reinforce the arrangement and add weight to other sections. In the beginning, I have the solo cello just playing this root note. It's fairly uninteresting on its own, but combined with the synths and sound effects, it's just helping provide a solid foundation for the intro. As we move into the climax, the cello and violin double and reinforce the French horns, trombones and trumpets. The effect is subtle, but it's adding more body and helping these important melodic elements cut through the mix. The emotional vibrato of the solo instruments is also just adding a touch of humanity and expressiveness to the music. 
Let's move on now to our beautiful sound in Piano Library Clavium, which is housed inside a special version of our Pyramid Engine and is contact player compatible. This library is also playing a pretty subtle but important role in this piece throughout the intro. Played in isolation, it's not the most exciting thing to listen to, just a root note played in octaves. But in the context of the rest of the arrangement, its function is clear. It's accenting the beginning of certain bars and adding another human touch to the wash of synths and effects we can hear in the intro. Again, there's so much to this library that this walkthrough can barely scratch the surface, and I highly recommend you check out our dedicated Clavier walkthrough to see what this piano is capable of. In addition to a standard piano, there's a whole library of synthetic and treated piano textures that can be seamlessly blended to taste using the morph control found here. I'm using a fairly dry piano in this piece. There's already so much going on that I didn't need too much else. Let's move on to have a look at Artifact Reanimate. This library is also now contact player compatible and is stuffed full of tonal and atonal sound design, heart hitting percussion and inspiring customizable loops. Let's start by looking at the percussion, which I'm using to create heart hitting trailer hits that will accent key beats throughout the piece. Trailer hits are a little different to normal percussion. They're really hard hitting, impactful hits that I use to accent key bars and transitions. They combine with the percussion to create a solid bed for the rest of the arrangement to sit on. Rather than just using one trailer hit, I've layered up various samples from the trailer hits, trailer punches, whoosh hits and whooshes categories. I'm looking for a good balance of elements. Some of the hits are providing weight and size, some providing punch, the whooshes and whoosh hits are layering up to create short, sharp transitions to each bar. These really help create excitement and momentum. I've exported some of these hits to audio, which makes it easier to place them at the right points in the track. A detailed explanation of exactly how I've layered all these together is outside the scope of this video, so I'll be exploring that in more detail in another video. In the intro section of this piece, I've used a few of Artifact's many sound effects. Here I'm using a blare and synth effect from the fragments section of the library. This acts as a gritty distorted bed to start the piece off. Layered over that is another even grittier sound from our markers category. Two eerie calls from our calls category and a huge sub kick from our sub kick category. Combined together with the hits, these form a tense, exciting start to our piece. Some of these sounds have also used some of the many built-in effects that can be found in the effects section of Artifact. This enables you to mangle, distort and customise these sounds in a near endless amount of ways, opening up the library for you to find your own voice and create bespoke sound design for your music. Finally, I'm layering these up with an awesome sounding effect from the Benders section of Artifact. I'm also using a couple of patches from Artifact and a riser that I've again exported to audio to finish things off. Risers are a staple sound in trailer music. They're a great way to create a sense of rising excitement and intensity and bring an additional layer to the music at key moments. I'm also using this huge sounding low synth from Artifact's signature synths to create a lot of the low end for the track. This is a huge sound that really acts as a solid foundation for me to build the rest of the synths around, and we'll be exploring those in just a moment. This may seem like a lot of layers of sound, but there's a couple of things to note. Firstly, trailer music is often stuffed full of sound effects, intense synths and huge calls. Again, these all combine to add excitement, depth and create a dense, interesting soundscape. Secondly, I'm paying attention to the frequency range and roll of each sound. I'm not just layering a bunch of random stuff together, I'm making sure these effects and hits combine in a way that complement rather than fight each other. Let's move on and finally take a look at photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a huge collection of sounds, ranging from thudding bass to aggressive pads, haunting soundscapes to bizarre, otherworldly effects. This really is a library you could explore for hours and hours and, with the range of categories and controls available, never cease to find new sounds and textures. 
Photosynthesis is now housed in a gorgeous new UI and is also contact player compatible. So let's take a look at how we're using it in this piece. In the intro, we're using Photosynthesis to provide some low bass and textures. I'm using this great digital bass patch to provide a brooding bass texture at the beginning of the piece. I'm layering that up with a soundscape called Monochromatic. That's filling out our arrangement and adding some depth to the intro. I also have this gritty pad called Waspish, which is adding some upper harmonic texture in the intro. I'm adding some additional distortion and saturation in the effects panel here to help this cut through and add some additional bite. And finally, this rhythmic texture called Priority Alarm, which is building in intensity throughout the intro and bringing the piece to a crescendo. In the intro, to add some ethereal, unsettling texture and create some more depth, I'm using this instrument called the Poor Man's Waterphone, which is perfect for creating some interesting textures in the upper frequency spectrum. Let's move on to have a look at the major role photosynthesis is playing in the climactic section of this piece. First, we're using another version of the digital bass with a shorter release to create this bass pulse. This is providing a lot of the low end in the climax alongside the low synths, percussion and trailer hits. I'm then using this rhythmic patch called Grace Siberia to create some rhythm in the lower and mid frequencies. Again, I've used some of Photosynthesis's onboard effects, including reverb, lo-fi and distortion, to shape the sound a little. I'm also compressing it slightly using the master effects in the master page to keep it under control. I'm then using this huge, angry sounding volcanic death bass to punctuate the beginning of each chord. It's really helping to create impact at the beginning of each chord and provides both mid-range weight and high-end bite to make sure the frequency spectrum is filled out nicely. Finally, I'm using these two sounds called the edge and infliction to fill out the synths a little. With trailer music, we're always looking for a balance between stability and consistency, but also rhythm, dynamics and texture. These two pads are providing a bit of both, some stability and solidity in the mid-range and some additional rhythmic texture in the high end. So there we have it, that's my hybrid trailer track and I hope I've given you an idea of what's possible using just a few libraries from the Audio Imperia range. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this walkthrough useful and I'll see you in the next video.